All right, so let's go back and look at the target. This is kind of where we got ended when we were in class. Um, when we were doing this project to, uh, or this uh, PowerPoint together, it was week three. But anyway, one thing I want to stress here is that whenever you're dealing with the interior part of the lensometer, this whole thing here is called the target. And at the very center of this target, you can always think of the patient's eye being right there. This is going to help you when it comes to, especially when it comes to prism and what you're spotting. If you just mentally think about the patient and they're looking at you and at the center of this target is where their eye is. That when the power lines come and cross, those were not crossing, but when they cross at the exact point at the center of the target, that means we've kind of located the optical center. Um, let's see, you can, if it was a minus lens, you could kind of think about it like that right there. That when we center this lens so that the power lines are perfectly centered, that we are actually locating the optical center of the lens. Okay, so, but you can see kind of the schematic of what's working out on the lens here. Whenever we go away from the center of this target, there's these circle reticles right here. You see those, all these little circles, and you see the one, the two, the three. Well, all these circles represent is a certain distance away from this center here where we have zero prism. And so half, one, two, three, same thing here, half, one, two, three, four and five, right? Four and five, y'all remember that from the PowerPoint? <clears throat> um, and you can see that they're increasing amounts of prism. So if we were, you know, here, like three doctors base up, three doctors base down. If they cross here, one doctor base down. This meridian line here in the lensometer, we've talked about that a lot. This is rotatable. And you do that with um, that chrome gnarled sleeve by rotating this guy right here. Then you can rotate these, um, this prism meridian line. The one, two, and three that are written on here are attached to this line. So when you rotate it, um, right now it's aligned with the 90th meridian. Um, when you rotate it along the 180, those numbers will go there and you'll have one, two, three right here. That's just to help you with reading. You could rotate them to 45 and you'd one, two, and three will be right along there. So this is just to help you um, when it comes to PRISM. Up here at the top, you've got that PRISM meridian scale. Um, you know, so you can see that we have our different meridians marked right here. And that can be helpful for a couple of different reasons. The main one is that you can position the 90 and the 180 so that you could look at how far down and how far in or out, that kind of thing. You can look at that. Um, but it could also be used, you guys are doing like, I'm sure you have in, uh, in theory where you're talking about, you know, the, 360 degrees prism meridians, where uh, 45 uh, or 90, let's do the vertical, it's just easier, the 90 and down here would be the 270, okay? It just helps you to align those if you wanted to say that something was like three and a half um, at 270, that would be the same thing as saying 3.5 base down. Same thing. Remember that this line here, these crosshair lines out here are the, the, um, the four and the five diopters. Anything else outside of that, we use that prism compensating device. This width, and we'll deal with this more and more as we um, you know, learn more about the lensometer, but the width of this hash line is actually equal to the width right here. Um, if you drew a straight, perfect straight line, you'd see that those all kind of um, correspond to the same width out here. And that can be helpful for 
um, a number of things, mainly if you're supposed to have it right here, let's say it's supposed to be right here at four doctors base down, but you're actually right out here crossing, then you would be able to easily see how far you are away from being right on this line here, right in the 90th meridian. When the power lines all come into focus, we talked about that, the sphere and the cylinder all focus all at once. Um, it's a sphere power. The rotation here is irrelevant. We could rotate that axis to whatever. It just so happens to be positioned um, right here. But when you get cylinder, all of a sudden you get these two different lines. They don't, they focus at two different points on the drum. This, all of them focus, but with this, we only see our sphere lines when we uh, focus those. And then when we rotate the drum, we see our cylinder lines come into focus. And we actually, back here, you can see we lose the opposite meridian is out of focus. So when the sphere lines are in focus, you can see that the cylinder lines back here are out of focus, that kind of thing. You can kind of use these ghost images here of those unfocused cylinder lines or, and sphere lines to help you to make sure that you perfectly center um, both the cylinder and the sphere. So both of these meridians have to be centered to cross at that exact point on the lensometer. So if, um, if they cross right here, when we focus it, let's say this one was that plus two, and then this one focuses at plus one. So we've got two different power drum readings here. And if this was the case and we had this, this is set up, and so they cross right at the very center of this target. If we spot this lens, what point on the lens did we just spot? When we spot this lens, because the sphere and the cylinder lines are both crossing at the exact center of the target on zero degrees of prism, we're spotting the optical center. So when we put those three little spots on the lens, it will spot the optical center. That center spot will be. When you look at the target, this is what the target looks like before we have any, nothing turned on in the target. This is what we have. Um, I did, for the purposes of this, so that we can do this practice, I put um, an extra set of lines here um, in addition to the ones here, just so that we could align with the 180 to make this a little bit easier for you um, looking at it on the screen. All right, so if we're centered right here. And the point that we're looking at, there are three of these little target pieces right here that are, are of main concern. But the very center one is the most concern and the very center of that point is the most concerned. That's where we're really referencing it. We don't reference out here or over here. We're referencing the exact center point because that's where the center line here crosses and the center line here crosses. And when we spot this lens, we have located the OC where there is exactly no prism. When we do want prism, we want to move this from the center to another point to correspond to another point here, anywhere on the target. Any, way, any place away from the center becomes the, um, the prism amount. So let's say we end up right here. Let's look at what we've got. We are how far above the center? How far above the center are we and what kind of what circle are we on or whatnot? Um, maybe I moved too fast. Whenever this target here, center of this target right there, you can think of it as the base of the prism. So wherever that thing goes, that's where the base of the prism is. So in that previous example, if we're here, 
then the base of the prism is base up. And how far up, we're up one diopter. So this would be one diopter of base up prism. If I'm here, I'm at exactly halfway between one and two. And so I am at what? 1.5 diopters base up. I could do this with anything. I could go right to here. What do you see here? Four diopters. Four diopters base up. Exactly. Whenever we go down below the center, All right, we're down below the center, so the base direction is going to be always base down whenever we're down here. So what amount are we at? 2.75. Very good. 2.75 base down. Yeah, because we're not quite halfway. Here's two. Here's half. And we're right about there. So halfway between half would be 2.75 base down. What about right there? 3.5 base down. Is that right? Well, I was wrong here because here's the three, four, 4 .5. five. Right. So I was at 4.5 doctors base down. Okay. Good. So base down, base up, that's pretty straightforward. And then the amount that you are away, the distance that you are away from the center point is your prism amount. Not too hard, right? So if you had a lens and it came in and it's centered right here, then you've got a lens that shows two doctors of base up prism. If you spot the lens there at that location, then you're marking a point on the lens that has two doctors of base up prism. This is perfect if you have a prescription that is, who cares? And then you have two doctors base up prism. Right, this what we call Rx prism or prescribed prism. So we want that in there. So we want to make sure that we center this lens so that it we spot the location that has two doctors of base up prism. Now, when it comes to in and out, that's a little bit more um, that's a little bit more involved because prior to this, for up and down, you didn't need to know. Uh, which lens we were talking about. At no point do you need to know whether it's a right or a left because up or down has no right or left. It's just either up above this line or um, below the line. But in and out are different because in and out are relative to which eye are we dealing with, um, as in in towards the nose or out towards the temple. Well, for the right and the left, those are two different um, directions, right? So let's say if we move it here, and let's say we center it right here, then we need to know, we can tell that there's two diopters of horizontal prism, right? Because we're at two diopters, the ring is at two diopters, and it's horizontal um, prism, but we can't tell whether it's uh, base in or base out until we know whether it's the right or the left eye, right? Remember that I was saying that you have that eyeball, right? So the eyeball is sitting right here. Yeah, it's a little eyeball. So the eyeball is sitting right here. And if this eyeball looks out, it's going to experience two diopters of um, horizontal prism. If it is a right eye, then the nose for the patient is here, right? And so you see the nose is over to the right for a right eye. And if this is their eye, and this is where the prism base is, then how much prism and what base direction do we have? We have two diopters of base. In. Correct, base in, because this was a right eye for the OD. But if all, if this was for a left eye, then the nose would be over here right? And then what do we have? Still two diopters, but the base of the prism is where? 
with reference to the I. Base out. So you'll need to know whether it's a right or a left eye in order to determine the base direction of the prism. Let's try a couple. If this was a OD lens, let's say this is the right eye, then what amount and base direction of prism? This is the point we're looking at, and we're along this first circle, which is the one. So we have one diopter, and then what we need to know is, is it, oops, sorry, is it base in or base out? Think of the eye right here. Think of the nose over here. What's the base, base direction? Out. Base out. Versus if it is an OS, still have one diopter, but the base direction is going to be different. And now look, we've got person's eye right here. This is the point of reference with a base. What do we got? Base in. Can you can you say why it's base out and base in if you don't have a prescription to go on? Because we're it's just reading what's right in here. And if it was the OS, it doesn't matter what the prescription is. If it's the OS, then we know the nose is over here to the left. And we know that the eye is at the center of the target. And so this base direction would be base in because this center point right here uh, where these two power lines cross is always considered the base of the prism. And this here is always where the eye is. So if it crosses right here, then we know for an OS, it's base in. But if it was a right eye, then this is gone. Base out. And their nose is right here. And we see that they have base out prism if it's a right eye. So I guess where I get confused on this is when you have to put like if it's a plus if it's a plus or a minus i'm glad you brought that up julie um the cool thing with the lensometer is is it, it, it is what it is you don't have to deal with whether it's a plus lens or a minus lens wherever it is this could be um this could be a plus one minus i mean it could be a plus one sphere let's just say it's plus one sphere um and this could be a minus two sphere if they are where they were positioned if it's positioned this way and it's a the right eye then it doesn't matter whether this is plus one or minus one it is what it is this is it's because that's the base of the prism this is where the eye is and once you know if the nose is over here or if the nose is over here, based off of whether it's a right eye or a left eye. So everything that we've been learning about, like <laughs> reading the prescription on the paper, this is sort of just, it is what it is. Yeah, that's what the, the beautiful thing about the lensometer. There's, it's just straightforward. Wait till we're about to do combination prisms and it's as straightforward as they come. It, you know, the, 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 the 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 rules that you learned about um well that has to whether it's a plus or a minus that has to do with where how you move the lens in the lensometer to make this happen like let's say we have this lens right here um and we wanted one diopter base out prism and the power of the lens was plus one the direction that we have to move the lens physically to create one diopter base out prism is the exact opposite of what we would have to do, the movement to create one diopter with a minus power. But that's irrelevant because you can look in the lensometer and, you know, it doesn't matter. You move the lens right or left and figure out it on the target where you want to be. Does that make sense? I mean, because if you want, if this is the right eye and your nose is here and we're dealing with the OD, not the OS, 
and we want base out prism, then we just put the lens in here mm -hmm. and move it to exhibit one dot or base out prism. Now, can you see it a little different? When the eyeball's on there, this is dead centered, right? So we're right on the pupil. But if we wanted one dot or base out prism, then we move the lens whichever way we need to move the lens to make sure that the power lines move to one dot or base out. So let's try some more. And this is just reading what's on here, like reading what's on the target. So what amount of prism is displayed? Let's say somebody had this in here, or let's say that you're prescribed a certain amount of prism and you want to position it on in the right place, then you need to know where to put it, right? So vice versa, you know, to, how to be able to read it off the target. So let's say this was a, um, let's say it's a right eye. So if this was an OD, a right eye, then picture where the nose would be and determine which side is it, is the base direction base out or is it base in? So the nose base is right. out. Correct, very good. So the nose is right here for an OD and we are um, at base out. Right, because from here to here, the base direction is base out. Two and, a half. and then how much are we base out? 2.5. 2.5. All right, let's do some more. We'll just keep doing this OD. Let's All say right. I move. Tracy, I got a question for you. Okay. Where you place the eye? Would that be the frame PD? And then you're reading the lens and telling it where the, how much prism is actually in that lens. Like if you were to put a lot, if somebody had an order of prescription and the optical center was set as the frame PD and you wanted to figure out how much prism they were getting by doing this and putting it in the lensometer, if you centered the optical center or the frame PD of the lens in the lensometer, is it going to give us an example like this? Not really, because if you, if you center the optical center, then you end up looking like this in the target. So then where would we center the lens to where the eye is supposed to be to get an image like you're trying to portray? That would be like if you have prescribed a prism. So the eye is actually where their optical center has been placed. Ideally, yeah. I mean, most of the okay. time prescriptions don't have any prism. And so when you do everything you do in the lensometer, you want to try to make this happened right here. You want to try to make sure that the power lines end up crossing at the center of this target so that when they look through the lenses, they're looking through the optical center. So I guess in a way with your PD thing, then yeah, the, the PD that we're trying to get here is we there's no prescribed prism. So we want this situation to occur so that we can turn around and make sure that that point, the optical center, is perfectly centered over their eye or is with reference to their eyes. So when you measure the PD of the glasses or the OC height, that that's what you're measuring. Okay. But when we have the same prescription, but all of a sudden now we have... Um, two doctors of base in prism, we Prescribe. now do not want them to be looking through the OC because then they won't be experiencing the two doctors of base in prism. Okay. So then what we need to make sure we do on the lensometer is to induce the two doctors of base in prism. So we go to the two doctor ring 
And we see that this is at base N because here's where their eye is looking. And if this is the base of the prism, then the prism's base N okay. at two diopters. So it's two different things. Then you also have unwanted prism, which is where it was supposed to be at one point, but it's not there. Okay, we gave you something different. Yeah, and you could have that with this. I mean, like this is supposed to be two diopters of base end prism. Well, you could have where it's not quite a two diopters. What's this amount? This one is half. one one and a half base in. So then, oops, we have actually 1.5 doctors base in, and we need to compare those two because that's not what they needed, right? This is what they needed. This was in the RX, but what we actually got was 1.5. So how far are we away from where we should be? A half the after. A half. And so this would be our error, which would then get applied to ANSI which would for be. prism tolerances. We haven't gotten into 100% there, but you guys remember that ANSI only allows us a third, mm -hmm. right, in each eye. And if the error here is a half, then at this point, it fails that prism test. Yep. So that's kind of, yeah. So even though you might necessarily want a particular thing, that might not be what you get. And so you need to be able to read where it's at and what it is and determine the base direction so that you can compare the two. Because then you also have where there was no prism was prescribed. So this thing is supposed to be at the dead center of the pupil, but it's not. Let's say it's off just a little bit. Then how much prism do you see this person experiencing right here? 0.33. Base well, in. we haven't, base in is absolutely correct. We haven't really looked at 100% in detail about this whole inside of this circle. Um, let's do that now. So if this first circle right here is a half of a diopter, right? And this point right here is zero. This very beginning part of the hash line right here is actually a quarter. And the midway point between these is where you're finding that third. Okay. So in that previous example, I don't know if this is going to get too much on this diagram. So where are we sitting for this? This is the point that we're referencing right here on this target. So you're within tolerance. Absolutely. We are at a quarter and we're allowed to be up to this point. And we are, we're within. So this error, although it's not what it's supposed to be, um, it you know, it's not at zero, it is still with well with well within tolerance. And that's the same thing when it goes for the vertical meridians as well. Let's say we're right here. Then how much prism do we have? This this remember that this pattern right here repeats itself all the way around. These are still circles. Like this is just a little smaller circle, and this is another little circle. So any point like right here would be um, in line with this quarter, and any point here would be in line with the third. So it's circular. Circular. So if we're spotting, if we're looking in and we're looking at here, then how much prism and what base direction is this person going to experience? I know there's a lot on this diagram. Is it too zoomed in? No. No. Is it a half? It is. We're crossing right here at a half of a diopter. And if this is the point of original reference, then what's the base direction? Up. Base up. Do you guys see that? This is the point. This is the eye. 
This is the point that we're referencing, and this is the base of the prism. So that is base up. 0.5 diopters base up. All right, let's try. So did that answer your question, though, Julie? Yes, it does. Thank you. All right, let's try some more of these. Let's say we're right here. So we're right here and it's an OD. How much prism is being displayed? Three diopters. Space out. Space out. All right, is everybody cool with the basic directions? We're yeah. going to add one more layer to it. Yes. Are you still filming or recording? Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. All right. Now let's look at combination prism. All right. Now we're at two different points. We're not along the 90 and 180. When we're here and here along this line, we're just vertical prism only. Right, because it goes either right up this 90 line or right down the 270 line. Same thing here, whenever <laughs> we move right or left, we're moving some point along this 0, 180 line. So now with this one, we have two different components and we need to measure those. And we're still measuring from this uh, point of reference here. And this is still the base of the prism. So if the lens is situated right here, first question you want to ask yourself, let's say, is this a right or a left eye? Y'all want to do a right or a left? We'll do a right. Okay. So how much, let's look at the prism, um, the vertical prism first. So how much vertical prism do we have in the 90th meridian? So ask yourself, how far above this point? So here's this line, and then we're up at this point here. So how far up from here to here did we go? We're literally asking here to here, but we're only, it's all the same. How far up? One dot. Walter. 1.5, right? Because um, we're it? halfway. Okay. You see that? So we got 1.5 diopters base what direction? Up. Base up. All right. Now let's look at the horizontal, which is along that 180 meridian. And so now we're asking ourselves how far from here is this? How far did we go here to here? And so you just draw that line right here, and this is where it crosses horizontally from here to here. And how Probably much? One. 1.5. We got another 1.5 because we're between. Yeah, one is right here, two is okay. right here. We're right about in the center there, so 1.5 diopters. And it is an OD lens. It's the right eye. So what base direction horizontally is it? Does everybody see that? So then when we write this prescription, so this is how we verified it. We broke it down into its horizontal, vertical and horizontal components, but it would be written out like this, right? 1.5 diopters base up and 1.5 diopters base in. Everybody see that? Yep. Yes. And now if this was the OS, the amounts are still the exact same, right? That ain't gonna change. It is where it is. But the base direction be, might be different. It's still base up, even if this was for an OS, so the nose is over here, it's still base up. That's That does not matter, does not change based off of right or left. But the in and out direction are going to be different. So now our point of reference is different. And so is this base in or base out? Base out. Yeah. So let's do this. Let's do another one. It's a left eye. Now do it, do it by yourself. See if you can get it. 
by yourself. This is a, a left eye. So the first step is, is which side is the nose on? Then ask yourself how much vertical prism, how far down the line we went, and how much we went this way. Remember the nose is over here. And we're trying to reference this exact point. All right, so this is an OS. How much vertical prism? How far did we go and what direction? We're at 1.5 base down, 1.5 base in. And one, and what? Two base in. Two base in, correct. Very good. Did everybody see that? So we'd write 1.5 base down and two base in. That's how you would see it here. This is how you think of it on the lens meter. All right. So let's do another one. And it is an OS. So figure out your vertical amount, and then figure out your horizontal amount. All right. Has everybody got something? Yes. All right. What did we get? 4.5. Yeah. And 275 base in. Is that what y'all got? Yep. Yes. yes. What about this for an OD? You will do this on the worksheet for this week. So I just want to make sure before we move on to the next thing that everybody's kosher with this. So it's two point. I got the two point something. You can do all the way to tenths if you want. Like if you say, well, I don't think it's quite 225, but it looks more like 2.1. You can absolutely do that. You can do 2.2. Um, that's more common. So what do y'all like, 2.1 or 2.2? 2.2 base up. 2.2 base up. I would have also accepted 2.1 base up because we are really close. You just kind of break it down. You know, if this is a 30 and that's two. This is halfway, you know, um, halfway between that would have probably been right about here, which would have been 2.25. So this one's probably sitting right about 2.1 if we're getting really exact. But if you said 2.2, remember ANSI allows us 0.3 of tolerance. So anywhere in that range is good. But I do also want to stress that you're not going to write two. It's not two because this line right here would have to fall right here to be calling that a two, right? And you mm -hmm. wanna be specific because let's say, um, let's say, what did you guys say? We say it's two, let's say it's 2.2 .2 or 2.1. Let's say it's 2.1 diopters, but what was actually prescribed base up was actually 2.5 diopters base up then how much error do we have? How far are we off from where we should be? 0. 0.4. 0. 0.4, right? See, in that case then, because this is so close, we would probably be like, oh, no, I'm actually reading 2.2, .2, which drops that down to three, and then we're like, yeah, we're moving on. <laughs> but if you, if you, if it was, I'm telling you, with these, especially for state tests and things like that, when you're being asked whether some passes or fails, that's what you're being asked. You're not being asked is, you know, would you dispense it or are there other things that we could do to make this work? You are just literally being said, this is what it is. This is what it's supposed to be. And is that's the error. And does that pass or fail? Technically, that would fail. So I want you to be as specific as possible, too, for that very reason, because we need to know what we want versus what we got, because that's the basis to applying ANSI. 
All right, so get off that soapbox. We got 2.2 base up. I want to go with 2.1. 2.1 base up, especially after that little discussion. And then what about the horizontal? 2.2 base out. 2.2 base out. 2.2 doctors base out. Very good. I agree. So if this is what we read, but this was what the Rx asked for. We see that we've got a 0.1 error and a 0.2 error, right? Both of those, okay? They are because ANSI allows us that third of a doctor in any, any of those meridians. So that would be okay. All right, that's just the next step. We're not really taking that step just quite yet. But it don't, don't hurt to start talking about it. All right, does anybody want to see any more of these? Or are we ready to move on to the next thing? I have a question. Okay. So if it's the right eye, it would be base out. And if it's the left eye, it's base in? Correct. Okay. But up and down will always be up and down. Correct. Okay. Yeah, for base in and out, just where's the nose? Is it over here? Or is it over here? 